Today we're going to be talking about the graphs of square root functions. So a square root function, f of x, equals the square root of x. And so let's pick, I want to get an idea of what this graph looks like with you. Now let's pick perfect squares. So our first point we're going to pick is 0, and the square root is 0, 0. So that's our first point on our graph. Now for x, pick another perfect square. So pick 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So I have that point right there. Now don't pick 2 because we don't know what the square root of 2 is without a calculator. Pick 4 because we know the square root of 4 is 2. So I go over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. And then pick another perfect square, which is 9. Square root of that is 3. So I go 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3. And because of the grid, that's all I have room for, but we could continue picking points if we wanted to. So our domain. Okay, what can I take the square root of? I can't, I can notice how I didn't pick any negative numbers. We can't take the square root of a negative number. So x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Our range, notice how our graph didn't go below the x-axis. So y has to be greater than or equal to zero. So translations of functions, a, is what we call a vertical stretch or compression. If a is greater than one, we're stretching. I'm sorry, we're compressing. I apologize. If a is less than one, what am I thinking? I'm Oh, a is greater than 1 is definitely a stretch. Less than 1, it's compressing. I should say if it's between 0 and 1. If a is less than 0, then it is a reflection on the x-axis. H. That's a left, right, um, movement. So it graph shifts left or right. I'm going to put a shift in there. Okay, so we're left if h, we are left if h is less than zero. And if h, I don't know why I keep writing b, h is greater than zero, we move it to the right. Now notice how, what I mean by that is notice how there's a minus sign in the middle there. So you have to make sure it's in that form. Okay. And then K is an up, down, shift. Okay, we move up. If k is greater than zero, we move up. If k is less than zero, we move down. So let's do an example of this. Graph that function. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in blue here the regular function that we have. Okay, so that's, that's just y equals root x. In red, I am going to put this function. So what that one half means is the y's get multiplied by one half. So meaning this y that was at one, well, zero, zero stays the same. That y that was at one is now at one half. That y that was up at 2 is at 1. That y that was at 3 is at 1 and a half. So see how it compresses our y's? 
and our domain and range stay the same because I didn't translate it left or right or up or down. Now let's do it with a three. So I'm going to put in real quick my regular function So you can see what happens to our graph. Okay, so now I want to take that graph and the y's get multiplied by 3. So meaning 0, 0 stays the same, but this 1 gets multiplied by 3. So I'm at up there. 2 gets multiplied by 3, so I'm at 6. That 3 becomes a 9. And it has a curve to it. It's not a line. Okay, our domain, since I didn't shift left or right any, stays the same. Okay, now we have a shift. And again, this is going to be a challenging one. So I'm going to put in my normal function like I've been doing. Okay, now my shift. Minus 5. It's opposite of what it appears. That means I'm moving to the right 5. So all of my points move to the right 5. This point that was at 0, 0 moves to the right 5. This point that was at 1, 1 moves to the right 5. This point here, I think it's going to go off my grid, moves over 5. Oh, it just fits. I don't have room for that third point. That's okay. So now my domain changed. Okay, the underneath the radical, x minus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that's another way, if I solve that inequality, that is another way that I can get my domain. Range, I'll be honest with you, I always as a student had to look at and see what the graph looked like. So that is y is greater than or equal to 0. Now this one. I'll put my original in. Okay, now let's do the shifting. Now notice how that 2 is not underneath the radical. Okay, if it's not underneath the radical, that means I go up 2 units. So now I shift all of my y's up 2 units. So that becomes 0, 2. 1, 1, if I add 2 to my y coordinate, I have, I shift it up 2 units. I shift this point 1, 2 units up. Shift this point up 1, 2 units. And that's my new graph. Now let's look and see what changed. Okay, what's underneath my radical? X, that X has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now what changed is our y. Our y shifted up to. So that's why I'm greater than or equal to 2 there. Because my y stop at 2. Okay, now this one has two translations. Um, okay, so first what I'm going to graph is I'm going to graph y equals negative root x. Normally our graph was going up and over that way. Oh, I have a bad grid here. That's okay. Negative root x is instead going to be shifting Negative root x would go like that. 
Now I need to take that graph and shift it three, opposite of what it thinks, three to the left. So I'm gonna do this one a little different because my grid isn't exactly what we would want it to be. And I'm gonna put this shifting in red. So this point that was zero, zero shifts over three. One, two, three. Remember we had that point one, one, just I'm going down. I go down to right four. And that's all I have room for in my grid. Probably could have made that number a little bit bigger. So now let's look and see what our domain is. Okay, so our domain, how we get our domain. What's ever underneath the radical has to be greater than or equal to zero. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative three. Now our range, our graph is moving down instead of moving up. So y has to be less than or equal to zero. And that is my video on graphing radical functions.